media conference and the virtual visual media conference. I am absolutely delighted to be able to introduce our next presenter, the one and only Frank Romano, who really needs no introduction at all. But I'm hoping that he's going to be able to let me thank him for his hospitality in Boston and to say how pleased we are to see him here. Professor Emeritus of RIT, President of the Museum of Printing in Massachusetts, and a belated happy birthday, Frank. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much. So we're going to talk about where do we go next? We're talking about the printing industry. So next slide, please. Um, again, this is all about change. The printing industry has undergone phenomenal change. And by the way, it's not just the printing industry. It's all of communication. I mean, I'm, by the way, I have with me a class of 29 students from South Shore Tech. They are all sophomores and juniors in a graphic communication program. They are the future of the industry, of the way we communicate. So that's why I wanted them in this audience. Next slide, please. So th this is a good example. This is an ad from Radio Shack that ran 30 years ago. And it lists a whole batch of products. Every one of those products I now have in my pocket. It's called my mobile phone or my cell phone. At one time, you had to buy an individual device to do all of these things. Now we carry them around with us. The only one that's not listed here is camera. And we have that with us as well. What's interesting is at the bottom of the ad, it says to find the local Radio Shack store. Uh, look in the uh, phone book. By the way, how many kids here have ever used a phone book? Two hands have gone up. Um, by the way, the interesting thing is it's for Radio Shack. And I think a lot of people would ask, what's a Radio Shack? <laughs> Next slide, please. So I have a lot of little quotes in here about change. Uh, we'll go, I'm not going to repeat them. I'm going to go on. Next slide, please. This chart here shows how technology has grown and died. I mean, photo typesetting lasted 44 years and just went away. It was replaced by laser imaging, which lasted about 20 years and went away. Of course, now we're in the era of computer to plate, but it's starting to decline as well. Digital printing, however, continues to grow. Digital printing does not require plates or image carriers. DI technology really has not gone anywhere, but digital printing is the one thing that is growing by leaps and bounds using either toner or inkjet. Next slide, please. So if you look at the volume of printing by the dollar volume in the United States, you start to see that there was a phenomenal growth over the years. Uh, but when desktop publishing came in around 1985, um, and then with the internet, we reached the peak and then we started to decline. It is still declining. It's about to level off uh, momentarily. But in terms of dollar volume in the American marketplace, printing as we know it is a shadow of what it used to be. Next slide, please. By the way, the decline in newspapers is not something that was because of the internet. The decline in newspaper reading and, and uh, advertising volume really began with, with television. For the first time, advertising dollars could go into a different medium, could reach more people. And so after 1954, we started to see the decline of newspapers. In the United States, we had almost 2,000 daily newspapers. Today, we only have about 800. Uh, one newspaper uh, just bought a thousand uh, iPads to give out to people who subscribe to their digital service. Uh, the New York Times just announced that the number of digital subscribers now exceeds the number of print subscribers. Next slide, please. So where, where did print go? What happened to it? Well, some of it went in electronic form. I mean, PDFs. There are uh, uh, every one of us now communicates by either a PDF file or a Word file or something like that. Some of it went offshore. I mean, when China prints oh, a widget, whatever it may be, they also print the manual and the packaging. That's also lost. And many of us have home printers now, and we print stuff at home, not realizing that the ink in those printers costs more than human blood. So really, What's left of the printing industry is a little less than 40% of what used to be the printing industry has gone away because it has been replaced by electronic methodology more than anything else. Next slide. At any moment in time, there are 3 trillion PDFs on the internet. If I were going to specialize in anything, it would be understanding PDF. 
because it is used for two purposes. One, it replaces paper. On the second hand, it is the major way we transfer files from the people who create files or design jobs to the people who reproduce those jobs. Those 3, 000, 3 trillion PDFs at one time were all printing. Now they are gone. Next slide. Printing is not one thing. Print is a whole batch of things. And you cannot ever just make a general statement about print. You really have to understand each individual item. The biggest category is advertising and prom promotional material. Flyers, pamphlets, brochures, booklets, things that promote products and services of various kinds. Packaging is also a large market. And by the way, packaging is the only growth market left. And the reason for that is you still cannot deliver a box of Wheaties over the internet. Until we get the beam me up, Scottish, beam me up Scotty technology, we're not going to see a change in packaging growth. And by the way, the next big thing is more printing of packaging with special codes on them to eliminate scanning at the checkout counter. You're going to see electronics built into our packaging um, at, at a very high level. Um, I'm just going to pick a few areas. For instance, financial. At one time, annual reports had to be printed. It was a, it was a requirement as a public corporation. When the federal, our federal government uh, said that you could do it in electronic form, most of that printing went away. At one time, in the spring of any year, you could not get anything printed because annual reports were going through printing companies in, in a way. Uh, manuals. Oh, technical documentation, as it's called. I mean, when was the last time you got a manual when you bought a product? At one time, you got a big box. In the box was CD-ROMs. I'm sorry, I go back to when they were floppy disks. And in it was a big manual. Now it's a help file or a PDF file, if you will. Um, so every, tech, every area you look at has had some technological force of affecting it. And that's going to continue over the next decade. So where the growth will be will probably not be in printing on paper. And by the way, we've already seen the decline in paper-based communication to the point where many companies, many uh, paper manufacturers have closed down their mills. In fact, there's a paper shortage right now in the United States as, as printers uh, are finding it hard to find paper for printing regular jobs. Um, next slide, please. Now, reading this is not easy, but there are some points in here. I've been checking on people who made prognostications, uh, predictions about the future. Uh, one, of, one of my favorites is from 1876, when someone uh, at the British Post said that there was no need for the telephone because they had plenty of messenger boys. Um, I, there was one from 1955 where someone was going to create a nuclear-powered vacuum cleaner. Uh, instead of a Roomba, it would be a Boomba, I guess. Um, uh, Time magazine in, in the 1960s said that remote shopping, uh, while entirely feasible, will flop. They should tell Amazon that right now. Um, and the, one of the founders of YouTube said, there are just not that many videos that I want to watch. So not many people got the predictions of the future right. Uh, even today, most of us don't. Most printing companies think whatever they're doing will just keep going on the same way. It's all changing very quickly. Next slide, please. Nope, wrong way. <laughs> That's it. People don't resist change. They resist being changed. Next slide. So... What are the new markets that were built by digital technology? First of all, on-demand books. Um, in many cases, if you order a book from, uh, from Amazon and it's going to come in one day, that book is being printed on demand for you. Um, it's amazing how many books uh, that are out of copyright are being reproduced. When I want to buy an antiquarian book, I go on Amazon and what I discover is many of them are reprints. I want the originals. Large format signage. Uh, the, the wide format inkjet printer only came out in the late 1980s, um, and it was actually designed for proofing uh, of color material for printing. Now, printed signage, large format signage, is a major marketplace. Almost every commercial printer has an inkjet device like that. Short run labels, the label market continues to grow. A variable data direct mail. Um, 
you know, used to be you saw mail that said you may be a winner. Well, what we're seeing now is essentially uh, personalization based on something they know about you. Um, you know, my birthday was recently and I've got a ton of, uh, of mail. Some of them knew my birthday. So they even mentioned uh, happy 80th birthday. Uh, digital embellishment. We are now uh, doing um, gold and foil stamping electronically with inkjet um, in electronic systems. Um, it's amazing the coatings that we can do. Uh, we can make a printed piece look absolutely gorgeous. 3D printing. 3D printing really was an, uh, an outgrowth of, of digital printing because what they discovered was that when it put down inkjet on the page, you could put several levels and it would get thicker and thicker. So eventually they figured out how they could make it into an actual product. Uh, they are now using, they're using 3D printing of cement to build houses. Fabric printing. Um, they used to have only one or two major design shows a year for, uh, for uh, clothing. Now they have several because they can print that material locally. They don't have to send it to China. And of course, short run everything. Everything we're printing today is short run. The, the day of the 50,000 and 100,000 run is gone. Next slide, please. So most of the growth today of the printing industry in the United States has been through merger and acquisition. If you just look at R. R. Donnelly, which was a major printing, the, the largest printing company in, the, in, in America, um, all their growth over the last 50 years was through acquisition. There was no organic growth of the printing market itself. Um, the other problem we have is there's a lot of legacy equipment out there, a lot of printing presses that are 30 and 40 years old. I get calls all the time. Do I know about an operator for a specific Heidelberg model from 1956? I'm sorry, schools don't turn out press operators. Uh, that's part of the problem. I saw a prediction the other day from someone who essentially said that within the next 30 years, the printing industry would go away because there would be no one to run all that old equipment. So all the skill sets of the old printing industry are now shrink wrapped. They're apps that you, you literally have it in a computer. Uh, re remember when there were people out there who had specific skills for the printing industry and they made a lot of money. Well, those skill sets are now in a computer. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So where, where do we go next? Well, it's going to be printing beyond paper, printing on plastics, printing on textiles, printing on fabrics, carpet, metal, wood, glass, and of course, printed electronics. That's the next big thing. And we're gonna integrate that with almost every product you can imagine. I mean, Apple is selling these little tags that you can put on items and then track them if they go somewhere. Um, imagine that on almost anything you buy at a supermarket, anything you buy at a store. Amazon is opening a store here in the US, um, a major retail operation that will have no cash registers. Everything will be electronic uh, when you go to check out. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So we're moving into the future at one second per second. Uh, there are things that have to happen with digital print for it to become even more viable. It must be more expansive. It must go beyond paper. We're, we're already seeing that with flatbed inkjet. We're already printing on material a quarter of an inch thick in many cases, no matter what it is, using UV inks. <laughs> uh, digital printing must print signatures as well as pages. We started out with toner doing individual pages. Now we're actually doing uh, four up and eight up, um, eight and a half by 11 or A4 pages. Uh, digital print must handle more spot colors. And I mean Pantone. Right now, most digital printers claim 80% of all Pantone colors. I'm sorry, I want 100% of all the Pantone colors. Um, which, by the way, even Pantone uh, uses different technologies for printing their specimen books. So I wonder how we're ever going to match all of those colors to begin with. Digital printing must handle more coatings. Everybody wants to have UV coating or something else over their printing. Digital printing must integrate special effects, what we're now calling embellishment. Digital printing must be faster, must be as fast as an offset press. It must be more automated. That, that's how we will solve the problem of who's going to run these devices, because the devices will, will essentially run themselves. We're even using robotics to load paper in and take paper out. 
So really the only reason the operator is there is if something goes wrong. And even then we have to be careful what they do. Digital must, be, um, must develop new products and new markets. So as we move into the future, we must now look at these new areas that we have to develop. Next slide, please. So the future of print is print. We're going to continue printing both on paper, but on all kinds of specialty materials. Thank you all very much for your attention. I don't know, are we going to do questions at this point? Yes, Frank, we can do questions if you like. I'm looking to see if anybody's got something through. Um, we had a question earlier on from uh, John Bailey. John Bailey was on the panel uh, at the beginning of the conference on the sustainability panel. And during the pandemic, he has been one of the architects of uh, perhaps the most exciting development of a new business called Precision Proco. He's well known at D-Scoop and has had international responsibilities there. And he said, I wonder if Frank will remember me when, when I, I think he said it was a whippersnapper. And he was on a panel with you many, many years ago. And he said he thought he knew everything about print, but you pointed out that he didn't. Um, I don't remember that. But at my age, I now hear a lot of, my father took me to one of your seminars. <laughs> well, um, a sort of belated happy birthday. And uh, you've given us what I would have expected, which is a, a tour de force. And the nice thing about it is you bring us to a point where there's some optimism. Because I think when we're looking at sustainability and innovation, we're frightened of disruption. And what you've just shown there is the degree of disruption. I remember when you took me to the Museum of Printing in Massachusetts, you showed me a machine which I think it was a linotype. I think it was a linotype that had matrices or the matrix to carry the impression for the printing plate. And they decided to go to step forward from that to introduce some uh, photographic techniques and actually they'd taken the old linotype with the matrix and they put a lens in it with uh, an image of a letter or a, a number and, and I often refer to that in the presentation as being the perfect example of evolution technology when you really need disruptive technology it was obsolete before it was built I mean you must have come across other examples like that yes well th th you're talking about the intertype photo setter which Thank was you. essentially a, a, a linotype machine. And each brass matrix had a little piece of film in its belly. And it yeah. would photograph one letter after another. It was the dumbest idea ever. You know who bought it? Our federal government. <laughs> it was introduced in 1949. And 10 years later, it was no longer available. Uh, but it showed the promise of photographic typesetting. And that's what opened up the market to it. Yeah, yeah, and this is what you know. This like this, the second mouse gets the cheese because they they had an idea of where they were going, how they were going to create the image, but they were working on a mechanical process that came from hot metal. Well, again, I grew up in the hot metal era. I worked for the Mergenthal Linotype Company, and they thought that the Linotype would last another fifty years, and three years after that, literally, they, they it was gone. Yeah, yeah. We have the last one that was ever made here at the museum. That was in nineteen seventy one. So the other thing that's interesting to me is this idea about disruptive technology. And you mentioned the 3D printing. Uh, 3D printing is an offshoot, isn't it? Because now it's become additive engineering and people realize that uh, one or two printing companies toyed with the idea. Have, have you come across any examples where people have actually moved from a conventional print business into 3D printing in a, in a significant way? No, I have not. And by the way, they now call it additive printing here in the US because you're, you're adding uh, levels of ink as you de deposit it. Um, no, no one has made that transition from a commercial print shop to a 3D printing shop. Mm -hmm. However, as they move more into flatbed inkjet, they're really moving into that world. And so little by little, I expect to see some commercial print printers get into it. Yeah, yeah. I was having a conversation in the previous session about in, in uh, 25 years ago, I had a video conferencing machine but it was boring because there were only five installed in the rest of the country and I couldn't, you know, there was no installed base. Uh, and it seems to me that there's a kind of technology hurdle to get over. Um, do you think that the printing industry is rising to the challenge or is it just depressed about it? Um, it's not rising to the challenge because the problem is we have no, we have no centralization of prediction or technology. 
Uh, our trade associations are trying to merge. Everyone has different opinions. Um, printers still think that everything is going to be okay. We'll just have to get through this period of the pandemic and everything will, will brighten up. But no, it's all going to change again. And very few printers are prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Sorry to be so pessimistic. <laughs> well, looking at new technology and the way things come about, uh, about the same time as I was experimenting with video conferencing, I went to uh, look at a company called Cytex in Herzliya in Israel. And two guys were working in a small industrial unit with what looked to me like a photocopier. Uh, and they were celebrating the fact that it got to a spoil rate that was a bit less than 50%. And maybe in the future, they think about duplex and printing on the reverse. That was Cytex. Oh, yes. That was Effie Orazi, by the way. And yeah. of course, the Cytex system was multiple PDPA computers, but it was the first system that lets you edit color. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now yeah. I do that with Photoshop on a Macintosh. I know. I know. And so I'm kind of encouraged that things that looked ridiculous and totally unimaginable with people experimenting in a shed somewhere to make things work, they do come through. So my question now is, where does Lambda sit? You've done it once, is he gonna do it a second time? Oh, I have no doubt. By the way, the secret to the Lambda technology, Lambda Nanographic Ink, is that ink. That ink has phenomenal possibilities. When I was in Israel, he took me to all of his, his secret operations. I mean, it's being used now to uh, paint cars. Um, it's being used to coat materials. It's being used in ways no one ever dreamed of. So what we're seeing right now in his printer is the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we have to suspend our disbelief because I'm sure it will happen. So being pessimistic, but at the same time, I think you must have seen some little examples of the future where we could perhaps learn. So just thinking about winding up, give us something a bit more optimistic, maybe some good examples of hope that you've come across. Um, when I was at a printer in uh, down south, and they were printing holographic tags because the next big thing is security printing. I mean, things get stolen on a regular basis. There are a lot of products that are fake products that could cause harm. And we're now trying to make our packaging and our tags and our labels in such a way that they can't be forged. I do a lot of work um, as a forgery expert um, on lawsuits. It's amazing how much forgery there is out there, not of money, but of actually packaging for commercial purposes. So I think you can see a big movement, and I'm seeing that now with certain printing companies, into security printing. So is that printing technology? Are they putting uh, watermarks, holographs? What, how, what techniques are they using? All of that and above. I'm not going to tell you what they are because then you would do it. <laughs> well, um, I guess we could go on for a long time, but uh, it's been an absolute privilege, and I'm so grateful for your finding time at your schedule to come and join us. Uh, it's fulfilled a dream of mine. Uh, you and I were once guest speakers at the Printing Industries New Zealand Centenary Conference, and you did it again by video conference. I had to go all the way there. Um, <laughs> I went, in fact, I did a round the world trip to get there, so I think I probably made the right decision. But anyway. Well, that's how I get there. Right? I, I don't go on airplanes, I go on ships. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I tell you, New Zealand was fantastic. Oh, I loved it. So look, um, personally, massive thanks. This is a big, big occasion for me, for the conference, for the printing industry. Belated happy birthday in your 80th year, you're still that, the voice of authority in the industry. And so thank you for sharing it with us, Frank. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the next 80 years as well. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, everybody.